Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to talk to you a little bit about Intel's 12th generation processors and just give you a little bit of an overview. Um, so here we've got the 12900K, the 12700K, and the 12600K. We're talking i9, i7, and i5 here. And one of the big things that these support is DDR5. But at the time of this recording, DDR5 is rare, it's being scalped, and it's being sold for double what it should cost. And the benefit of having DDR5 right now over DDR4 is anywhere from 0 to 10% with a good average of about 5% more performance. So if you're going to spend, let's say, an extra $200 and you're looking at a 12600K and you're going to spend a couple of hundred more dollars just to get DDR5, your better bet is to stick with DDR4, put that couple of hundred dollars in to getting the i7 instead and getting more performance that way. You're going to get more than 5% more performance by jumping to here than you would by taking this and putting DDR5 in it. So that's just my, my two cents there. But right now, we're only doing DDR4 January 2022. If you're watching this video after that, we may have switched to DDR5. But until DDR5 prices normalize, we're going to be sticking with DDR4 because there's really not much at this time of a performance benefit by going to DDR5. Now, let's talk about what these chips are. These are in response really to AMD, what AMD came out with uh, this past year where they leapfrogged Intel. They have 16 core processors, 12 core processors, and 8 core processors which better the, what, what Intel can offer. And Intel has been dealing with heat, a lot of heat issues. And their response to this is they've come out with a 16 core 12900K, but it's, it's a little bit of a hybrid or what we call a big little design, meaning it's got some big cores and some little cores, and I'll explain. Um, so the 12900K has eight P cores, and it has eight E cores for a total of 16 cores. This is a 16 core processor, but P stands for, for performance, E stands for efficiency. So the 8P cores are what, does, are what are, what are going to do things like gaming, uh, video rendering, anything that has to be done quickly is done on the P cores most of the time. Um, things like gaming have to, things have to happen on time or you get hitches or glitches or whatever you want to call it, pauses, stutters, you know, people use different words for it. But basically when you don't have smooth animation in your game, it's, it's very disconcerting. Um, and so that's why games are really going to be running on these eight performance cores. The efficiency cores are designed for things like background windows tasks, things like if your antivirus were to kick in or an email comes in or uh, Windows decides to check for updates, things like that. The E cores can kick in and take care of those tasks and also, uh, they don't use as much electricity. And when they don't use as much electricity, they don't produce as much heat. You see, if Intel came out with this processor and gave it 16 P cores, you might say, well, I'll just give us 16 P cores. They, you wouldn't be able to keep it cool. They would have to drop the clock speed down so low to keep it cool that it would underperform the AMD counterpart and maybe even underperform their previous generation processors. So they said, to stay within our heat threshold, the better thing to do is to make half the processors or cores really, really fast and make half of them a little bit slower. And then what we wind up with is something that can be cooled but some, and something that's also fast. So uh, again, if they'd have gone with 16 performance cores here, those performance cores would have to be dialed down so low that they would actually perform worse than their previous gen chips or the ones from AMD. Now, these P cores also get hyper-threading here. So I'm going to put uh, HT out here for hyper-threading. So meaning you get two threads for each core. If you don't know what hyper-threading is, just Google it. I'm not going to get into that right now. 
and the efficiency cores do not have hyperthreading. Now, for example, I'm looking at some notes here because I, I can't memorize all this stuff. The max turbo frequency of the P cores is 5.2, and the base frequency is 3.2. I can't write. Let me try that again. 3.2. So when they're just sort of idling, not doing a whole lot, uh, uh, or doing some nominal work, you know, you're going to see something like this. When you're playing a game, you're going to see something closer to this. Now the efficiency cores, the E cores, they uh, can go as high as on this processor 3.9 and their base frequency is 2.4. And in testing, uh, it's been found these are very potent cores. They're just running at a lower clock speed than the P cores. And again, by doing this, it allows Intel to be able to cool this chip, or me to be able to cool this chip enough to uh, keep it from overheating and still get really, really good gaming performance. So here we have a total of, let's count up our threads. We have 16 threads here, because we have eight with hyper-threading, plus another eight. So we have 24 threads here, 24 threads. Uh, and again, eight cores with hyperthreading gives you 16, plus another eight gives you 24 threads. Now let's look at the, I'm using a different color here, the 12700K. This is the i7. This particular chip um, has eight P cores still, but it only has four E cores. And I'm not going to get into what the, the turbo speeds and all that are, because I don't have those memorized. But as you see, the, there's a very small difference here. The only difference, main difference here, as far, in, at least in core count, is we have four less efficiency cores. So what do you think this means for gaming? Well, gaming happens mostly up here. So what we've found, what everybody's found, is this 12700K, when it comes to gaming, pretty much holds its own with this 12900K. It's the better bargain. Now, most people that buy from us aren't looking for the best bargain, or a lot of people aren't. I would just say most. A lot of people just want, I want the fastest of the fastest. Well, if you want the fastest of the fastest, of course, that's the 12900K. But if you want best bang for buck, that's going to be the 12700K. Again, because it has eight performance cores, just like the 12900K, and you're only sacrificing four of the efficiency cores. And really, you probably don't need more than four efficiency cores. I mean, how many cores do you need for background Windows tasks? Um, so again, that's why testing has shown this chip really holds its own with the 12900K. And I can tell you, this chip runs a lot cooler, too. When, you're, uh, when you've got 100% load on these two, this one runs a lot cooler, and I think it's because of the, the lack of four efficiency cores really helps it, helps cool it quite a bit. Now let's talk also about the i5 variant down here, the 12600K. Let me get my other color here. This one has six performance cores or P cores, and it has, uh, how many? Yeah, it still has four efficiency cores. So um, you're giving up two, two of your performance cores here. And so what we found, uh, or what not we, but I mean reviewers have found, is there's a bigger drop off going down to this. Now it's still small, it's still small, the drop off. But you get a bigger boost going from here to here than you go get from going from here to here. So this is really the, the performance bargain, but this is still incredibly, incredibly fast. And one thing we didn't do is we didn't count up the threads here. Remember, performance cores have hyper-threading, efficiency cores don't. So we have 12 plus 4. We have 16 total threads on this processor. And on the uh, i7, 16 threads plus 4 uh, gives us 20 threads here. So, there is the Intel 12th Gen as it currently sits. Now, they're also going to come out with a 12400, which you'll probably see in like our mainstream system. That's going to have six performance cores and zero E cores. Uh, and that is going to probably perform very, very well in gaming, quite well. 
um, probably will have a fall off in productivity type tasks like video editing and 3D rendering and modeling and desktop publishing and things like that. But in gaming, a 12400 is probably going to perform very nicely. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an understanding of what Intel has done here um, when you because you know when you when you look at this you know you see 12900K 16 core processor but there's caveats in here in that half of them are E cores and half of them are P cores and that's not necessarily a bad thing but to to me this is my opinion in my opinion I think this shows that Intel still can't be as efficient as AMD otherwise they would just give us 16 performance cores and not bother with these E cores um, but I can tell you, based on my testing, if this was 16 P cores running at this speed, there'd be no way to keep the thing cool without, you know, liquid nitrogen or some elaborate cooling method. So, anyway, there you go. There's 12th gen, at least as it currently sits in January of 2022.